Thousands of years ago, humans had already developed the need to protect their feet from the elements. It took centuries, however, until the tasteful shoes of today were developed. Before we get started make sure to like the video, subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon. The, the 19th of September 1991 was a significant date in shoe history. A mummy was discovered in a glacier in the Tstal Alps on this day. Two's feet also had a pair of well-preserved primitive shoes, according to researchers. The shoe uppers were deerskin, the insides were woven linden bast, the cushioning and isolating layers were grass fibers, and the soles were bearskin. The shoes were estimated to be 5,300 years old. This discovery, along with research on 40,000-year-old Chinese skeletons and paintings discovered in the Altamira cave dating from 15,000 to 12,000 BC, shows that humans developed the need to protect their feet from the elements very early on. There was no one original shoe. Having said that, the history of shoes cannot be traced back to a single, original shoe. Different climates necessitated different footwear, ranging from animal furs wrapped around the feet and calves to palm leaves bound beneath the foot. These early shoes provided warmth and protection from the elements. In cold climates, inventions like these were the precursors to boots, whereas in hot climates, they were the prototypes for sandals. As a result, shoe development was heavily influenced by the conditions. Mass migration from the 3rd to 6th centuries, as well as the Crusades, from the 11th to the 15th centuries, enabled the blending of previously disparate footwear fashions. Until the modern-day recognizable types of men's shoes emerged. Much of the footwear available today has been clearly influenced by past footwear, shoe history lives on. Methods of shoemaking, shoe construction, and shoe production have hardly changed since the 19th century. The only aspect of shoe production that has changed significantly is tanning. What humans sought to achieve in prehistoric times is now taken for granted. When properly cared for, modern men's shoes made of premium leather last a very long time. They also guarantee a perfect fit, which aids wearers in maintaining healthy feet. An overview of shoe history eras. Prehistoric times. Humans felt the need to protect their feet from the elements 40,000 years ago, according to studies on recovered bones. There has been no discovery of footwear dating back to prehistoric times. The first shoes were made of animal hides and furs that were wrapped around the foot. The sandal, the simplest basic shoe form, was invented by the ancient Egyptians to provide protection from the heat of the sand. Ancient Egyptian sandals dating back to around 3000 BC have been discovered. Classical Antiquity Classical Antiquity was the first period of peak shoe development. Shoes, whether sandals or a pansai, served as social rank identifiers. Classical Antiquity was a period when Greco-Roman culture flourished, including an early peak period of shoe production. Shoes became a common commodity during classical antiquity, as evidenced by depictions on walls and tone paintings from the time. The famous Egyptian sandal, for example, with a shaft strap running diagonally across the back of the foot, was already in use at the time. The Roman sandal, distinguished by a series of straps ascending the leg, was another famous shoe model developed during this time period. Sandal boots were sandals with lacing that extended up to just below the knees. Regular boots, incidentally, arrived in Europe from the Far East in the 4th century and were originally reserved for men, despite the fact that other types of shoes worn during classical antiquity were unisex. A pansai were the preferred footwear in Celtic lands. A pansai are heelless shoes with a sharply curving sole that ends in a pointed toe woven onto the shaft. The rural population wore these as their traditional footwear. The Teutons and Franks used to wear primitive foot socks that reached up to the knee and were made of untanned fur. They wore tied peasants' boots instead beginning around 500 BC. 
These boots were made of leather and were held together by a long strap. Middle Ages Nonetheless, the Middle Ages were a time when footwear flourished. During this time, new shoe styles were introduced, heels were invented, and even Goodyear welted shoes were developed. Leather shoes were made using the turn shoe production method in North M, On, and Central Europe during the Middle Ages, or 500-1500 AD. Turning the shaft and sole inside out and stitching them together is the process of making turn shoes. After that, the shoes are worn with the other side facing outwards. Surprisingly, the Goodyear weltying shoe production method appears to have been developed by the late Middle Ages. Duxbill shoes, cow mouth shoes, and bear claw shoes were all Goodyear welted when they first became fashionable in the 16th century. Kid leather was already being used to make shoe shafts in the 11th and 12th centuries, and it is still a highly sought after shoe material today. Heels were invented in the 16th century. Women's shoes with platform like soles were invented in Spain and quickly spread to England, France, and Italy. The chopines, which were popular in Venice, were the most extreme platforms. They had up to 40 cm heels and required those wearing them to be accompanied by a server or use poles to avoid falling over. Chopines were definitely not good for your feet. 19th century. The footwear of the 19th century served as a springboard for today's men's shoe fashions. Much of what we now consider standard in terms of shoe design and manufacturing method can be attributed to this century. Classic men's shoe models emerged during this time period and have remained virtually unchanged to this day. Men primarily wore low-rise shoes at the start of the 19th century. Goodyear welted men's shoes, developed between 1880 and 1889 as a sort of competition among European master shoemakers, are still considered classics today. They are still as popular today as they were when they were first introduced. There are so many fashionable shoes from the 19th century that only a few are listed. Adelaide's, Chelsea, Balmoral's, Clogs, Patterns, and Sabo. 20th century. Synthetic materials have dominated the footwear industry. Cheap discount shoes are made of such materials and are glued, rather than stitched, together. The rise of changing consumer demands in the 20th century also resulted in the invention of the health shoe. In the 20th century, new technological breakthroughs shaped shoe history. While leather was previously always vegetable tanned, which limited its ability to be manipulated, new tanning methods involving chrome salts were developed during this century, opening up a whole new world of men's shoe production. In the 20th century, the development of new thermoplastic rubbers and other synthetic materials resulted in significant cost reductions in men's shoe production. Stitching was replaced by gluing, allowing more people to afford more shoes more frequently. The resulting decrease in shoe quality necessitates frequent shoe purchases. While these shoes are less expensive, their long-term value is far lower than that of Goodyear welted men's shoes. In other words, the lower the price of a shoe, the less durable it is. Sports shoes, which were invented at the turn of the century, first gained popularity in the 1960s. Trainers are among the most popular leisure shoes in the world, thanks to their extreme wearing comfort and wide variety of designs. There are so many popular shoes from the 2000s that only a few are listed. Square toe sandals, clear shoes, super pointy pumps, thongs, the T-strap, ballet flats, platform pumps, strappy sandals. Thank you for watching the video.